beautiful starseed welcome back to my youtube channel my name is emily the mystic and if you are new here i am a spiritual business owner i am an akashic records master consultant and teacher i am a coach for spiritual business owners and entrepreneurs and i also do psychic development coaching as well and i built a spiritual business completely and entirely from scratch during the pandemic and 2020. And now it is my full-time gig. I had over $100,000 in revenue last year, and I'm on track to exceed that goal this year. So I love teaching others about spiritual business. It is a huge passion of mine. And I had a fellow uh, subscriber to this channel ask for a video about how to get started as a spiritual business owner. So I wanted to put together a little mini training for you of what I would do if I were in your shoes, if I were starting a spiritual business from scratch, how would I do that? What are some of the concrete action steps that I would take in order to get my spiritual business going? So this is for brand new business owners. If you've had a spiritual business for some time or you're struggling to get it off the ground, you may find some helpful insights and nuggets here for you. Um, however, this is really aimed for beginners and people who are really new to doing virtual business and e-commerce and online business. Um, so if you've been in the game for a while and you have a relatively established business, this may not be super helpful for you, but of course, if you love my content, then feel free to keep watching. But otherwise, I'm really excited to share some helpful t tips and tricks to help get you going with your work as a spiritual business owner. So regardless of what you plan to offer, what you plan to share with the world, whether it be doing psychic readings, mediumship readings, tarot card readings, astrology, birth chart readings, or maybe it's intuitive art, or maybe you're doing um, some sort of like written remote reading for somebody or perhaps you are creating something maybe you're doing intuitive branding or something that is your own creation regardless of what you want to offer what you want to sell what you want to share with people before you're even going to do that and create pricing for your offers you need to create an audience for yourself before we sell anything we need to have people to sell to, right? Before you create a physical in-person store, you're going to need to find a location and a space where you can rent in a neighborhood with a demographic of people that are going to buy the product that you're going to buy. For example, you wouldn't place a high-end luxury store in a low-income neighborhood. The goods are probably not gonna sell and there may be some security issues, just as an example. So you wouldn't create a product to sell if you have nobody to sell it to, right? So that's why step one of creating a spiritual business is to create an audience for yourself. And we're gonna be using social media for your audience because I built my business completely from social media completely organically through creating organic relationships online. And social media is free. It's a free way for you to offer and market your services and advertise yourself. There's no barrier to entry. There's no cost to entry. So creating a social media account is gonna give you a platform for you to be able to speak to your audience. Now, if you're starting from scratch, you're not gonna have an audience yet, but eventually you will. It's gonna take a little bit of time. It's gonna take some consistency and some effort, but eventually you're gonna create a little community for yourself and eventually a bigger community of people who are here, for, who are here to hear your message or to work with you or whatever those people are here to experience being in your energy. So you need to start by creating a social media account for yourself on the social media platform of choice. So pick the social media platform that you resonate the most with. 
not the one that your friends are doing or that you see other people having success with or the one that is you know trending the most but the platform that you enjoy being on the most if you start there you're gonna have so much more fun creating this than if you try to force yourself into a box where you don't feel like you belong for example i started my business on instagram i've always loved instagram i love that it's a platform based on visual aesthetics and photographs and now short form video content and so i loved being on instagram and i felt like that was such a free space for me to be able to be creative and to speak to people and to share my work with the world. I was told at the time by a business coach that I needed to be on Facebook to share my message and to start building an audience on Facebook. But that totally didn't resonate with me and I had so much resistance to it. And so therefore I didn't find any clients on Facebook, right? So I had found and had success with Instagram and eventually I branched off into this YouTube channel from there, but you need to pick one platform to specialize in first. You also don't wanna be on all of the platforms if you're doing this for the first time, that can be super overwhelming and maybe a bit too much for you if you're just getting started. So pick one platform. Of course, the big trending platforms are going to be TikTok. They're going to be YouTube. I'm not on TikTok as of now. Just doesn't resonate with me as of now. Maybe I'll branch off into that at some point. But for you, if you love TikTok, if you're on it all the time, that may be the place where you need to get started. Or if you love Instagram and you love um, the short videos and the, and the photos like I do, then maybe that's where you need to be. Or maybe you've been in the corporate world for a long time and you really spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. You know LinkedIn really well. Maybe you wanna end up being on LinkedIn or maybe even Pinterest. Pinterest has a lot of potential. So that could be a platform that you would want to explore as well. So once you've picked your platform, now you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna create your account. You can absolutely use an existing account for yourself. Um, on that in, on that social media platform. So if you already have a personal account, you can absolutely use it and start from there. Therefore, you're not gonna be starting from zero. You already have a small amount of people who know you, um, who are already engaging with the content you've been posting. So I would highly recommend you do that because it's gonna be easier for you. You don't have to start from zero. And if you haven't used your account in a long time, um, most social media platforms are going to push your content out to other people because they see that you're starting to engage and start using the service again. So it can be a great way to find more followers quickly if you pick back up on an old account. However, I also understand that you may feel uncomfortable with the idea that your friends, your family members, perhaps people from high school or college are going to see you talking about spirituality on that page. If that's the case, number one, block or delete or have ask, you can um, have those people unfollow you. I don't mean directly messaging them, but you can remove them as a follower on most platforms or just forget about it. Those people are not going to care. And if they do, their opinions do not matter for you. This is your life. This is your new business. We do not need the noise of external influences influencing what you do. Now, if that is too much for you and you really would like the freedom of starting from scratch and creating a whole new account for yourself, you can do that. That's what I did. I started from zero and I built my account Emily the Mystic on Instagram with zero followers. It actually started out as my fitness business account at first and I built an audience that way and then eventually I pivoted into spirituality and now that's my of course my main focus. Um, so you can start from zero if that feels like it gives you the freedom to show up and post. Now what I will tell you about that is you're gonna have to do a little bit more work and show up consistently in order to build your audience because you are starting from zero and you're not going to have a thousand followers overnight. You could if you create a really awesome viral video right off the bat, but likely that's not going to happen. So it's going to take you some time and consistency. Now with choosing a name for yourself, if you have no idea what your business name is going to be, use your, your name. You can use 
I am and your name. You can do your first and last name. It may be fun to pick a spiritual business name, but don't get hung up on the name when you're first getting started. It can always change. There are so many things in this that people get hung up on where the perfectionism comes in, like what platform should I be on? What's my name going to be? What's my branding going to be? And if you're getting hung up on that before you even get started, you're never going to get started. I hate to say it. You're never going to do it. You're never going to take the leap. I, again, my account started as, as Emily Logan Fitness, and eventually I pivoted into spirituality. I didn't lose any followers. People came along for the ride with me. People loved it. Eventually I changed it, you know, my name to Emily the Mystic. And that came with time. So everybody has to start somewhere and it's not going to be perfect right off the bat. So pick a name that resonates with you now and don't spend that much time on it. Give yourself literally, this is my challenge to you, give yourself 24 to 48 hours, one to two days to think about it, meditate on it, feel into it, talk to your friends and family members, your significant other, the people in your life who know you and come up with a name and start there, okay? So don't let that hold you back. Then once you've picked your name, you're going to want to start posting content about who you are. Again, before we can sell something, we need to share information about who you are so people can find you. It's like, let's say, here's a really great example for you. Let's say you want to make a new friend. You're in a yoga class. You see a person next to you who looks friendly. You want to be their friend. You're going to go over to them and introduce yourself, right? You're going to say hello, ask for their name, chat a little bit about the yoga class. You're not going to go over there and be like, hey, I do psychic readings. Do you want to buy a reading from me? <laughs> no, that would be super awkward. Therefore, when you're just getting started as a new spiritual business owner, you need to start posting content about who you are so that people can get to know you, just like you would be getting to know a new person in the yoga class, right? So the content that you start posting initially can be pictures of you. Don't have to be photo shoot pictures of you. They can be selfies. They can be simple pictures of you in your home or travel photos that you have from the last couple of years. You can use old photos, for goodness sake. No one is going to know that they're older photos, right? I post pictures from my travels over the years all the time. Um, and so post pictures of you and your life to help people get to know you. That's a great way to introduce yourself. Then from there, you're going to want to share information about you and your perspective on the spiritual industry. So maybe you are a psychic and maybe you want to start talking about your opinions of psychic gifts and how in the psychic industry, specifically within spirituality. Maybe you want to talk about your experiences that you've had since you were a kid. Maybe you want to tell stories about the spiritual experiences you've had working with so your spirit guides or communicating with loved ones on the other side, for example. So tell stories about yourself. Introduce your life. Think of it as a little, um, a fun journal of you and who you are. Same goes, and this is, I'm, I'm framing this more for Instagram specifically, but that could be the same for TikTok. You can do the same thing on Facebook. You can do the same thing on LinkedIn. You need to introduce people to you. And honestly, introducing people to you and talking about yourself that can, you can make weeks worth of content out of that. Again, even before you go to sell something, you can do a post talking about your experience, another post telling a story, another post talking about how you get started doing this. Now, when it comes to the type of post that you're creating, I love using the um, online software system Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com to create graphics for Instagram specifically. You can create any kind of graphic on there for Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever your platform of choice is going to be. Canva is free. There is a premium plan that I do pay for because I use it for my business. Of course, it's a business deductible expense, but it makes design really easy and fun. 
However, if you're not even ready for that yet, you can start by writing notes in the notes app of your phone and taking screenshots of that and posting that to Instagram or um, Facebook, right? So it doesn't have to be complicated, but Canva is a really great design resource that you can use. There are also a lot of influencers out there who specialize in social media and who create free content. They're all over YouTube as well about how to post, how to create reels and how to create carousel posts for Instagram and how to create TikToks and all of the ins and outs that you need to know about that. I'm not gonna spend too much time about that in this video because this is just a main overview of what to do. But in order to start building your audience, you're going to need to create content for it. And Canva is a great place to do that if you want to create some graphics with spiritual quotes or sharing your opinions or sharing a story or talking about yourself, sharing your mission, your values. You can absolutely create graphics like that on Canva to do that. But don't get hung up on your branding when you're first getting started. Again, it's more important to share information about who you are with the world, right? And we want to set a goal for ourselves with how frequently we're going to post to our new social media account. So if you are brand new and you're just getting started, your goal should be to post at least four times a week ideally five. I post five times a week. If I had three hands and 48 hours in the day, I would probably post double that, but I don't <laughs> have that. And I have other things going on and it's just not a priority for me right now. But you should be at least posting four times a week. Three is not my deal. I would say four to five is great. Um, and that is gonna be a great way to pull people to your audience. Now, when you're doing that, if you're starting your account from scratch, you can follow other people who are um, spiritual influencers in order to help build your audience. So you want to make sure that you're following accounts that you resonate with in the spiritual industry. You can follow their followers so that you start creating a little bit of a community for yourself and you start seeing people show up on your feed that you resonate with. Another great thing that you can do is comment on the posts of people that inspire you because you're, of course you're going to be looking at it anyway. So all you need to do is just leave a comment um, saying how helpful that post was and how much it resonated with you. And that can be a great way to engage with other spiritual creators and also to have people see that you're commenting and want to follow you as well. So that's how you're gonna start building your audience. This can take a few months to really get off the ground, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> and if you're being honest with yourself, if you want to dedicate the time and the space to it, and let's say grow to 100 followers, that could take you a month. If you're really resistant, it could take you a couple of months. I wanna say it took me a good six months to grow from zero to 1,000 followers on Instagram. So this is not an overnight fix. This is not a quick cash injection into your bank account. This is dedicated slow growth in order to help you build an audience that you can eventually sell to. You also don't need a website at first. Again, if we're <laughs> we need an audience to sell our our products to, right? And if we have a website and we spend a lot of time on the website, but no one knows the website exists, it is unlikely you're going to get people buying from your website. Of course, there is SEO and search engine optimiz which is search engine optimization and ranking through keywords on Google. I get that, but if you're brand new to this, it's unlikely your website is going to rank on those top pages on Google and that you're gonna get clients that way. I'm sorry to burst your bubble on that. I also personally have not used Etsy or other websites to sell my services. I do all of my business through social media. And now that I'm established, I have a website that people can find. Um, so I wouldn't recommend getting started on Etsy. 
There seems to be a bit of competition around price on Etsy. So I would again start by creating a social media account. Start there and start building relationships. So again, before you even go to creating the website and creating your offers, you need to create the social media account and start building know, like, and trust. People want need to know you, they need to like you, and they need to trust you. And that is the process of building relationships. The hardest thing for introverted starseeds, myself included, to come to terms with as a business owner is that you are going to build a business through relationships. End of story. You cannot sell to thin air, right? <laughs> you have to sell to a, another person. You have to sell your service to another person. And you're going to need to create relationships to do that. You could create a business with no social media account through your interpersonal relationships, but you would need to write a list of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 people that you know who would be interested in buying a reading or a service from you. And then you would have to ask those people after, after they've bought the reading to refer you to people that they know. You could do that, but I think for most of us who are introverted, that's super, the thought of cold, of reaching out to people that you know in your network, your acquaintances, your friends, that's scary as shit, right? <laughs> you don't wanna do that. So you, maybe you do, so you could do that, but likely you're not going to want to do that. And that's where the social media account comes in because you're going to create an audience that resonates with your content and resonates with what you're posting about. So through your social media platform of choice, you're going to start engaging with people and you're going to start finding people who are maybe even in the same place as you. Maybe they're just starting a spiritual business. Those are great people to message and say, hey, like I'm starting a spiritual business too. Tell me, like, let's get to know each other and let's, you know, be along, be friends on this journey together. Great way to get to know people. You can message people who are engaging with your posts and say, thank you so much for following me. I just started this business. I'm so appreciative that you took the time to find me in my content and just say hello. Introduce yourself. You do not need to cold message, cold DM people who are not engaging with your posts. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that leads to anything. There's some business coaches that teach that. I don't think it's helpful, but I do think it's helpful to introduce yourself to new followers, especially if you're brand new and just getting started and you can start building relationships from there. Okay, so that's the importance of audience building and relationship building. You are going to build a business on relationships, right? You have to sell to people. Right, we get it. <laughs> we get it, we get it, we get it. Okay, so once we've gotten that far, once we've got a little bit of an established audience who are actively engaging, it doesn't have to be a big audience. Could be 50 people, could be 100 people following you. Maybe that's 1,000. So once you you get to that point where you have um, people who are engaging with you and following you, that is when you are going to want to offer them something and share something with them. And ideally, that is going to be something for free to get started. Now, before you freak out at me, I'm not doing my spiritual work for free. No way. We all have to start somewhere. So humble yourself, my friend. <laughs> Unless if you've been doing this for a long time, maybe you've been doing work in person and you're getting ready to take your business virtually and online, then of course, you're gonna start with the price point you already have. But if you've never done readings for people before, or you've never done spiritual services, maybe you just got certified as a Reiki healer, maybe you read tarot cards for your friends for free, maybe you talk to loved ones on the other side, but you have never done it professionally, you're gonna have to offer free readings, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to break it to you, but everybody has to start somewhere. And we all do work for free when we first start doing our business, when we first become business owners. Why? Because in exchange for the free service, you're going to ask the person to do a testimonial for you. And once you've created an assortment of testimonials, you're going to have people who you can 
reach out to his future clients, but you're also going to have that social proof that people need in order to book a session with you. So to your established audience, you're going to want to share a freebie of some kind. So for me, when I first got, first got started, I offered, I want to say, 10 mediumship readings for free to the first, you know, to the first the first 10 customers, I did a free reading. And in exchange, they wrote me a testimonial. Great, easy way in order to start getting proof that you can do the work that you know that you can do. And it also helps you build confidence in yourself and in your gifts, whatever they may be. Maybe that's creating a piece of free artwork. Maybe they pay the shipping cost and then they share pictures of it to social media, to their network. But you wanna make sure you're coming up with some sort of an exchange if you're doing the work for free. So it could be a testimonial, it could be them creating a video of themselves, talking about the reading that they've had and sharing that with their audience. Um, that could be inviting three friends to follow you. There can be uh, some sort of exchange that you get in doing the work for free. Eventually, once you've done, let's say 10 readings for free, you're gonna upgrade your price point. Now we're not gonna go automatically to two or $300 for your reading for one hour, okay? It's not gonna feel safe to you and those readings are not gonna get booked. So when you're first getting started, you're gonna wanna start at a lower price range. I know that stinks, but eventually you'll feel comfortable doing that and then you're going to be able to get to the higher price point eventually. And you'll see an upgrade in your clientele and your client base as you do that. But you have to be established in order to offer the higher price points right off the bat. So gradually raise your price point. Let's say you do 10 readings for free, you do five readings at $50, and then you're going to do your next 10 readings at $100. Great. You're raising your price point as you feel ready to raise your price point. If you are doing a service like Reiki healing or mediumship or a tarot card reading, you're going to want to use a scheduling software like Calendly, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y. That's what I use for scheduling all of my clients. I believe you can use it for free, but once, um, but in order to get more advanced features, you're going to have to pay, I think it's $15 a month to use it. If you're doing virtual readings, you're also going to have to get an account on Zoom, Z-O-O-M, which is the platform of choice for doing video calls. You can, of course, do calls through FaceTime, uh, which is free, and Google Meet, I believe, is free, but I prefer using Zoom in ease, for ease of use, and most people know about it and know how to use it. So you're going to want to create a calendar account on a calendar calendar software to help schedule people to make that easy for you and you're going to start doing your readings. So through your platform that you're using, you're going to want to offer whatever the thing is that you're offering and then set a boundary with it. You don't have to do 100 readings for free. Maybe it's 10, maybe it's 20, whatever that number is for you. You're going to have to decide on that and then share your link for people to schedule with you. And then make sure you tell them that they need to off give you a testimonial in exchange or whatever you think makes the most sense for you. And then there you go. Once you have gotten that started, again, eventually you can start raising your price points. Once you start raising your price points, that is the point in time in your business when you are going to want to really niche down into something that is very unique to you, a service that is unique to you and to who you are. There are a lot of psychics out there. There are a lot of mediums out there. There are a lot of tarot readers out there. And not to say that we don't need more psychics, more mediums, more tarot readers, but you still need to set yourself apart from the rest of the pack you still need to create a really unique brand for yourself. And again, this comes later in time once you've started establishing your audience. So for example, if you're a pet lover, why don't you specialize in doing energy healing and readings for pets or readings for people who have lost a pet that's on the other side? If you love children and you've got kids of your own, 
maybe you're, you specialize in doing readings to connect people to their spirit babies, either babies that have been lost or babies that are getting ready to come in and incarnate into this, onto this planet. Maybe you're obsessed with art and creativity. Maybe your niche is going to be do doing aura paintings for people. You're going to need to create something unique and create a niche and a service for yourself that is a unique version of you as a brand. So some, some way to really set yourself apart that makes you unique and different and fun than everybody else who's doing the spiritual readings and everybody else who's talking about star seeds, right? We need to make it a very unique brand for you. That's something that I really specialize in helping my clients with one-on-one. -on -one. So I'll talk about that more at the end of this video. So as you're really specializing, your content is gonna change, it's gonna evolve. You're gonna start sharing things that are more unique to you and the niche that you're speaking to, whether that be pets or animals on the other side or children or spirit babies or plants or intuitive artwork, whatever your special niche is, your content is going to revolve around that. Once you've gotten that far and you're starting to develop a bit of a consistent client base or consistent bookings, that's when you can start offering things like one-on-one -on -one mentorship where people can start working with you over a long period of time. Therefore, when people work with you over a long period of time, they are paying you in installments month over month. And when that happens, you can start to build a consistent income for yourself. And then, of course, people are going to get a better result working with you long term. Eventually, you may want to build a course or a group mentorship, but you don't even want to think about that yet, you guys, until you've created one signature service for yourself, whether that's a special reading or a special artwork that you do or a special type of energy healing session, something that's really unique. That is really the you factor. Once you've got that, then you can expand that, create a course around it, sell the course, create mentorships around that, sell the mentorships. But before you get there, you need to do all of these other things first. And your niche is going to evolve with time. As you train, as you meet new clients, you're going to be able to look back with time and notice, wow, I really specialize in this thing. That's what I notice in a lot of my one-on-one -on -one clients is they're able to look back at their journey. Maybe they've worked with 20 different clients. They start to see themes in the type of people that they attract and in the type of things that they are able to help out with and the things that they can really specialize in helping their clients with. It usually is a reflection of things they've been through in their own life that they, can, that they are therefore able and equipped to help other people with. But in order to get there, you're going to need to do the free readings, right? And then you build yourself a client base that you can eventually look back on and reflect on and see, okay, this is what I am good at. This is what I can do. This is how I help people. And therefore, you can start pivoting your social media account in that direction. Yay. All right, so that is just a super brief overview of Spiritual Business 101. Of course, this is a 30 minute YouTube training, so I can't give away all of my secrets within a YouTube video. That would just be too much and you would also be exhausted listening to it. So again, that was just a brief overview. Now, if you are ready to take your spiritual business to the next level or to start your business and you need that help, that mentoring, somebody to help you discover what your specialty is, your brand to really help you create a brand identity for yourself, I'm an expert in all of that. I love, love, love helping my clients create a really unique business around who they are and their gifts and what their purpose is on this planet. So if that is you, I am going to leave some information below for you to book a free complimentary call with me in order for us to talk about this 
and what it would look like doing one-on-one mentorship together. You can also book a business-focused Akashic Records reading with me where we can dive into the specifics of all of that. So I will leave the link to that below as well. And comment below on this video what helped you. Maybe there were some nuggets in here of information here that really helped push you along. Again, all of this is consistent action that you need to take. I guarantee you, you've been doing the spiritual work behind the scenes. You've been reading all of the books. You've been pulling oracle cards for yourself every single day. You've gotten yourself to a place where you're so educated in your craft and your trade. And now's the time for you to start sharing who you are with the world. And once you get to that point, it gets easier, but you're going to need to take some small baby steps, some consistent action in order to actually get there. Yay. All right. So make sure you subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Give this video a big thumbs up if this helped you and stay tuned for next week's video. I'm sending you so much love for your spiritual business journey and I will see you soon.